Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to another Wild Rift video and in today's video I'll be playing Pantheon. If you just want to go straight to the Pantheon gameplay, there's going to be timestamps in the description. So before going at, go actually going into the gameplay, I have some announcements and I'm going to show you how to build Pantheon. So the first announcement is going to be that I actually made a funny tweet as you can see. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. <laughs> this picture is just hilarious so i made a tweet caption this and then the funniest caption that people reply to my twitter um gets shown on my youtube channel like i'll show it on the big screen here you know so as you can see there's already a few people that have replied to it so i'll put a link to this tweet in the top in the pinned comment and if you're a funny guy take your chances and put you know reply to that tweet <laughs> okay so Keep in mind, the skin giveaway is going to end tomorrow, you know, the 1st of May. I'm going to pick 10 winners to the skin giveaway. All you got to do, put down a comment under this video, you know, and some other videos to increase your chance. So about Pantheon, I actually got a new build and uh, my friend Kamolto has been playing Pantheon and I really wanted to revisit Pantheon because of him. So um, I, I played him, I tried some builds. I used to build Yumo's Ghost played on Pantheon. However, I don't, it's not the best item. Black Cleaver is way better. And the reason for that is because when you use your empowered second ability on Pantheon, you're going to easily stack up the Black Cleaver because you hit a lot of, like you hit four basic attacks in a super quick succession with it. So Black Cleaver is the way to go on Pantheon. Also, Black Cleaver makes you tankier. Like everything about Black Cleaver is better than Yumo's Ghost Blade, except for the fact that you're not as fast as the Yumo's Ghost Blade. So Black Cleaver is literally the perfect item. It also gives you a lot of ability haste. Okay, after Black Cleaver, you'll want to get boots, tier 1 at least. You might want to get tier 2 boots if you really feel like you need it. Like, let's say the enemy has a lot of attack damage, you can get plated steel caps. Or if they have a lot of stuns and ability power, you can get Mercury Strats. If they don't, just straight go for the Styrox Gauge. Um, you can also get Ionia Boots of Lucidity if you feel like you don't need either of those boots. These ones are also okay on Pantheon. Now... They're not the best because you already have 25 ability haste with Black Cleaver. So it's a bit of an overkill perhaps. So, you know, I would definitely recommend you to go for one of these two boots on Pantheon. Okay, um, after Black Cleaver, get Sterix Gauge. And the reason for uh, the reason for that is because uh, Pantheon has a lot of base attack damage. Like his base damage is super high. It's among the highest of the game. So Sterix Gauge is going to give you 50% of that base damage that you have as bonus damage. So that's a lot for Pantheon. This item is going to provide you a lot of value on Pantheon. So you really want to get it as your second item. Um, after these two items, you're going to be incredibly tanky and you're going to be very obnoxious and annoying, you know, and you're also going to shred through tanks because of this item. So um, after that, it depends on what enchantment you need. I have teleport here, but it's kind of random. Uh, the two enchantments that I really go for is either proto belt or redeeming enchant. Um, Redemption, I mean, sorry. So Proto Belt is very good if you want to, you know, if you want to surprise the enemy or catch up to them because Proto Belt and then you can use your second ability, you have massive range. Now, Redeeming Enchant is very nice if you, um, if your comp and the enemy comp are supposed to deal sustained damage, you know, Ziggs, Oriana, Jinx, sustained damage. So not burst damage, you know, um, um, this one, the Redemption is not good against Zed. Evelyn, Akali, Katarina, you know, it's not good against burst. However, it is good against sustained damage. <clears throat> So after your enchantment, I really like to go for Deadman's Plate. Of course, go for Deadman's Plate if you need armor. Um, but this is like this is going to be your main armor item. Because um, a lot of movement speed on Pantheon is incredibly nice. It really fits his kit like really well. So go for Deadman's Plate. If the enemy has a lot of ability power, however, you can choose to get Force of Nature or Abyssal Mask. Now, Abyssal Mask especially is pretty good i'm actually gonna put it here instead of the spirit visage it's especially good on pantheon because pantheon's second ability allows him to dive in the middle of the enemy and then you can tank a lot of damage with your third ability too so with this you know you're gonna make the enemies take 15 percent bonus damage as you can read here Fifth, enemies take 15 percent bonus damage if they're close to you so this uh, abyssal mask is gonna be very good if your team has a lot of ability power so you can dive in and make the enemy take more damage you can get a spirit visage if your team has a lot of healing i don't really recommend it it was kind of random here so and uh, force of nature is also really nice if you want to engage into uh, if you want to engage in longer fights because this one is going to give you extra movement speed in the longer term in the fight and extra magic resist this is very very good for longer fights 
Randomous Omen, also another amazing item on Pantheon. Go for this one if the enemy has at least two champions that do crit damage. Like if the enemy enemy has Yasuo and Jinx, you know, they both go crit, get a Randuin's Omen. You can even get it as your third item if you really feel like you need it. Um, yes, so only go for it if the enemy has a lot of crit. You can also go for Thormil if the enemy has a lot of healing. You can basically go for a lot of these items, you know, you get the point here, you know, it's kind of situational. Dead Man's Plate is really good. This one is also really good, Randuin's Omen, and um, Force of Nature can also be really good, you know. So yeah, it really depends on what you need. Okay, about the runes. Conqueror. It's very easy to stack up the Conqueror. Always go for Conqueror. And here, um, so, okay, you can go for two runes as your second rune. Either go for Brutal or for champion you know i like to go for champion but brutal is very nice for people that are not as confident as me on their gameplay you know because um champion is very risky if you die you're gonna lose damage but if you don't die you have 10 percent bonus damage so it's high risk high reward of course but if you can you know if you're actually if you play it good and safe you can maintain that 10 percent bonus damage for a really long time which makes it worth more than the brutal because brutal only gives you like you know it only gives you seven attack damage and two percent uh, armor penetration you know so here i really like to go for hunter titan i don't go for spirit walker because you're already pretty tanky and um, the items that you go for are already going to provide you a lot of movement speed, you know, dead man's plate and things like that. So that's why I like to get Hunter Titan to sustain, you know, to get tenacity as well. So the enemies can't stun me for too long. And as my fourth one, this like, now here it's also kind of hard to decide what to go for. I like Pack Hunter. Again, the bonus movement speed, you know, you're going to be able to chase down enemies. And when you're, of course, going to get bonus gold when you chase down enemies for your allies, right? This one can be really good because especially at the dragon fight, if you're able to kill off a lot of enemies with your allies, your team is going to get a lot of gold from this one, you know, you can get up to 500 gold from nowhere, which is, you know, it's pretty good. <clears throat> you can go for Hunter Genius, however, I don't really recommend it, again, because Black Cleaver already gives you 25 ability haste, so it's kind of an overkill. Um, you can also get Mastermind, this one is really good if you want to push hard and if you want to do objectives, but I like to stick with the Pack Hunter. You can even get, where is it, Pathfinder. Get Pathfinder if you want to walk around a lot, you know, if you really want to gank lanes a lot. Okay, I've talked a bit too much again in this video, so let's, let's actually get into the gameplay. Oh yeah, about the spells, I really like to run Ignite on Pantheon. I like to run Ignite on Pantheon support, Pantheon Baron lane, mid lane, wherever. Unless you're of course jungle, then I go for smite. Okay, enough about this, let's get into the gameplay. Alright, on to the gameplay. So, in today's video, I'm playing Pantheon support. Now, before clicking away, because I know you guys don't really like support videos, I played some insanely aggressive Pantheon, and I really suggest you to watch this video. Every time I try to tell viewers that support can actually carry the game. And in this video, I'm gonna prove it yet again. I really wanna, you know, I really want you guys to play support as well, because it's actually a nice role. So I'm playing Pantheon support, and let me explain to you how you wanna play Pantheon in the early game. Because um, you always wanna upgrade your second ability, by the way. This is, you know, always upgraded in the early game. So you can catch out enemies super easy. As you can see, my ADC is super stupid. Look at this. Oh, it was free damage. So when you play Pantheon, you want to camp bushes, try to catch out an enemy at level 1. Because when you hit them with your second ability, you're, you're gonna outdamage them. There is no way that they're gonna win that trade. So, unfortunately, the Jinx didn't follow up. But if you can get your ADC to follow up, try to hide in a bush and catch out the enemy. You are guaranteed gonna get a flash out of the enemy, at least. Okay? Look at this. Boom. Look at how easy it is to play Pantheon. Look at this. Boom! Oh my god! We already got a kill! And um, the way that you can do it with Pantheon is use your second ability. This is your main ability, guys. And um, it's so powerful. So, so powerful. Also in the support role. As you can see, uh, whenever an enemy overextends, you can punish them very easily with your second ability. Just go on them, do another two basic attacks. This is very important to do the basic attacks. Because... Um, then you're gonna increase the damage of your first ability as well. Now, you can't always do it, of course. You know, sometimes you gotta hit your first ability immediately. But a really important tip that I have for you on Pantheon is after you use your second ability, the empowered one, 
you have three stacks. So if you can, try to hit two more basic attacks and then use your first ability. Because the increased damage is pretty huge. So when you play Pantheon, I would say uh, you, all, you always want to use an empowered second ability. You know, try to stack up and dive in with your empowered second ability. And after that, you can either use an empowered first ability or an empowered third ability. It depends on what you need. In, uh, oh my god, look at, just look at this, what's going on. <sighs> We're absolutely destroying the enemy. It's kind of funny because the enemy is actually made a, make a pretty good comeback in this game. I'm not going to say who won the game. I'm just going to tell you that these enemies actually made a pretty insane comeback. So, you know, you really need to see how this game uh, unfolds. Uh, what was I talking about? Yeah. So after you dive in with your second ability, the empowered one, um, use your first ability if you want to deal damage. Use your third ability if you want to buy time. You know, the empowered ones, of course. So um, buying time is especially powerful when you're playing support Pantheon because you can dive in, you can cast your shield towards a certain direction and block damage for 1.5 seconds. Very, very powerful. This is very powerful because you can literally dive in 1v5 and take zero damage for 1.5 seconds. It may not sound like a lot, but it's absolutely huge if you're tanking damage from five enemies for 1.5 seconds. Because your team can deal damage too, you know? So these are very important things on Pantheon. You want to dive in. Don't play him passively. You know, don't try to poke with Pantheon or anything like that. You want to be in their face. Like, look at this. Just like that. What I'm doing right now, this is what you want to do on Pantheon. Unfortunately, the Jinx is not really following up with my actions as often as I like her to be, but it's still okay. So I can already get a Black Cleaver here, and um, another very good thing about Pantheon is when the Dragon is spawning, you can easily go back and buy your item. Why? Because you have your ultimate, you know, if you're too late, you can just use your ultimate to dive in. Anyways, so whenever you can get an item on Pantheon, go get it, because you still have your ultimate to help your team. You know, it's very, very important because you can get this item power spike very easily, right? Okay, so about Pantheon's ultimate. When do you use it? So, um, with Pantheon, you really need to have good map awareness, you know? you. Re oh, look at this, by the way. This is not so good. So, I'm really trying to tank the damage for my ADC here, but he really overextended a lot. And unfortunately, he dies. Yeah, I really couldn't have done anything. So you use your ultimate, um, there are some very good scenarios to use it. First of all, let's say your team is losing the fight and the enemies are chasing your team. This is a perfect moment to use your ultimate into the enemy because the enemies are chasing your team so you can hit it for free. You can predict where they're going of course and hit your ultimate for free. Another good way to ult is like this. You know, in the middle of the fight, use your ultimate to zone out enemies and, you know, just destroy them with it, as you can see here, you know. <clears throat> Another good way to ult is to gank a lane. If you're playing Pantheon Baron lane, for example, you can always just go to the mid lane and gank with your ultimate. So th there's just many, many ways to use your ultimate and um, it's a very, very powerful tool on Pantheon. Let's take a look at this. Oh, I actually didn't mean to stun him. Kind of funny. Wow. I got outplayed so hard by the Akali. I didn't mean to stun... Uh, I didn't mean to stun the Janna. Oh my god. The Akali went invisible exactly when I used my second ability. And that's why I went on the Janna. That was pretty sick. <clears throat> so this is actually kind of the start of their comeback. All of these enemies are so low. It's crazy. I really, really want you guys to play Pantheon support, guys. And let me know how it goes. Also, if you really want to support the channel, make sure you give this video a like. It actually helps a lot with the, um, you know, the YouTube algorithm, the robot, whatever it's called. So yeah, keep that in mind. Oh, what a disgusting snipe. <laughs> oh, that, that must feel so bad for the Lee Sin. Also, I'm planning to, I'm planning to get Challenger this, this season. It's not like last season. I'm actually pretty good in this season. And I'm playing every single role. Right now, I'm Diamond 1. And I'm on my way to Master, you know, which is pretty nice. And I want to reach Challenger as an autofill player, you know. I want to play every single role and reach Challenger. I know I can do it, you know. I know I can do it. And I am getting there. You know, I want to provide you guys top quality content. So I'm going to get good at every single champion and try to upload them on my YouTube channel. That's kind of my plan for my channel, right? <clears throat> So here I'm kind of overextending as you can see, you know, we're playing against an Ash and 
I have a tip for you on how to play against Ash because you know you may think you know it's just Ash she doesn't deal that much damage it's true she doesn't deal that much damage but Ash's passive allows her to slow you with every single basic attack so if you get caught you are dead because you're gonna get slowed and the funny thing is Ash also has this incredibly annoying ultimate which stuns you for like two seconds so keep those those two things in mind, you know, Ash can actually catch out enemies very easily. Even though she doesn't deal that much damage, she has pretty big range and she has insane slows and stuns. So keep that in mind, you know, don't don't play around with an Ash. Um, mind your positioning. Another important tip that I have for you against Ash, you can actually get Quicksilver Enchant. This is very powerful against her ultimate, you know, whenever she stuns you with her ultimate, you can get out of the stun and cleanse it with Quicksilver Enchant. <clears throat> so yeah, um, Pantheon support is also really good at roaming around if you need, if if necessary, of course. Like whenever mid lane is fighting, I can just use my ultimate. And look at this, this is yet another way to use your ultimate to cut out, to cut off the enemies. They actually both use their flash. However, he cannot escape from me, as you can see. And I'm just going hard, and they wasted everything for me just because of my ultimate. They had to waste every ability. So I did a really good job in this fight, actually. Yeah, as you can see, you know, just walking around, I'm stunning them all the time, dealing damage, using my shield. Just, you know, as a Pantheon, you're basically supposed to buy time for your team and to um, lock down an enemy, you know. And the funny thing is you can also finish off enemies. Oh, so beautiful. Look at that dive. You can also finish off enemies with your first ability. So you really need to utilize these, these, um, these powers of Pantheon. So let me, I'm going to briefly explain to you again what Pantheon's powers are. First of all, catching out enemies with your second ability. Secondly, buying time with your third ability. Third of all, finishing off enemies with your first ability. Fourth is burst damage. So a major weakness of Pantheon, like an absolute huge weakness, is sustain damage. Pantheon has zero sustain damage. So in longer fights, you, you don't do anything. Pantheon's basic attacks are pretty much useless and you won't do anything. So as I said, you really want to utilize Pantheon's powers, which I just mentioned like 10 seconds ago. Um, you don't want to engage in longer fights. If you engage in longer fights, you kind of want to walk around and just stun the enemy, block damage, deal damage and go out. Don't stay for all that. Like, look at this, look at this, look at this. This is a longer fight, I lose. It doesn't matter how ahead you are, you will lose longer fights. Trust me, you will lose longer fights. That's just the major weakness of Pantheon. <clears throat> Pantheon is strong in all these aspects, aspect, uh, except for the sustained damage. So, you know... That's also how you can win against a Pantheon. Pick sustain damage champions like Jinx. Uh, I mean, Evelyn can do good sustain damage to Pantheon because of her first ability. And look at this dive. Let's 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 look at this dive. Boom! Easy kill. My whole team died, but I'm just turret diving like an absolute chat. Easy kill. Look at that damage. But it's not enough for me yet. Yet another dive. Boom! And the red buff. Got the triple kill. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Tell me any other support that can do things like this, guys. Support can carry the game. And Pantheon is also viable on support. Oh, such a beautiful dive. Like the ultimate and everything. So, so, like, that's... This is making use of Pantheon's powers. You know? <clears throat> Look at this. I'm like six on one. Crazy. Okay, I, I talked a lot again. I need to drink my water. It's actually crazy how fast the YouTube channel is growing. Yeah, let's talk about some personal things again. You know, I talked to you. I, I said a lot of Pantheon things. Um, it's crazy how fast the channel is growing. Like It actually, it's surreal. Seeing so many people, you know, put down nice comments. It really makes me feel for fulfilled in life, you know. Like... I am making uh, or I am doing something and so many people are enjoying it. Do you guys know how good that feels? It's truly a dream come true. Like my dream has already come true. Literally my, my, my dream has already come true. And I just want to continue making this dream even better. And 
it's it just feels so good you know all all you guys enjoying the videos like i almost never read any comments that say bad things you know of course you can tell me something that you don't enjoy about my video i'm not telling you to not do that please tell me because it's very important to hear what the viewers want you know because i mean that's how i want to do it right <clears throat> I don't want it to be, I don't want my channel to be like content creator viewers. I want to have it like a community. So that's why I talk uh, with a lot of people. I have a Discord server as well. I reply to a lot of comments. I read things. I actually uh, uh, apply things as well that I read, you know. I actually read it and think about doing it. And if a lot of people want to see something, I do it, you know. It's basically, that's kind of how I want to do my channel. Take a look at this. S tier Pantheon. Literally S tier Pantheon. And look at how much damage i did as a support pantheon so i really hope you guys enjoyed this video and you know i will see you all in the next wild drift video bye bye